So in this video, I'm going to try to explain why and how you should set up your drum set and how it's not the way that it comes from the manufacturer, unfortunately. Today, I don't have a drum set in front of me because to explain this, I don't need one. This is all going to be conceptual and you can put whatever drum or cymbal in that you have and it'll work just the same way. Basically, I have a throne here that I'm sitting on. This should be the same for everyone. You want to sit down at it and just as they say on every website, you just want to put your feet on the floor where it's comfortable as if you were playing in the air. That's where you want your feet to be when you're playing the actual drums. So for me, this is comfortable, so that's where my feet just naturally rest. Now, of course, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to put my bass drum directly in front of my right foot. Just playing a five-piece, four-piece, whatever you got, normal drum set. Hi-hat here, bass drum here. Now, a lot of people like to set their bass drum so that the front head of it, the resonant head, faces the audience. Now, if I'm sitting here facing the camera and you guys are the audience, then my bass drum is facing off that away. That's okay. There's no law that says your bass drum has to be facing directly at the audience. I mean, you can put a cool graphic on there or whatever, but it doesn't have to be directly facing the edge of the stage. Because if it was, then I'd be sitting like this. Now my bass drum would be facing the stage, but where's my body facing? It's facing over here. This is bad because all night I'm going to be trying to play to the audience, put on a good show, and my body is going to be twisted in this direction. That's going to put a lot of unnecessary stress on your back muscles when you could just sit facing the audience, tilt your drum just a little bit to the side, and all of a sudden, no stress. You're relaxed, you're facing forward. Okay? Now we'll move on to the snare drum. Obviously that's going to go right in between your legs, right in between the hi-hat and the bass drum. Not going to mess with that. Okay, here's where the kicker comes in. Your toms. Now if you play a four piece, you're obviously going to have one tom on the rack, one tom on the floor. You want to have the rack tom directly in front of you. In most drum kit situations, this is perfectly possible with the factory setup. Have an arm coming out of the bass drum, put a tom directly in front of you. That way you can just go from the snare drum to the tom-tom, and it's real simple. Then you would obviously put your ride in, where the second rack tom would be on a five-piece. Then your floor tom is going to have to go on the floor next to the bass drum. So you'd have snare drum, tom-tom, floor tom. This way, everything's in front of you. You don't have to twist or bend or do any kind of weird motion. You can hit everything. You can put a number of splash cymbals, crash cymbals, whatever in front of you. On top of that, and it'll all make sense, everything's in your field of view and you don't have to twist to get to it. Now, if you play a five piece, if you put your first rack tom in front of you and your second rack tom to the right of that as the manufacturer suggests having the arms coming out of the top of the bass drum, which we just decided was to your right already. Then, all of a sudden, if you look down the center line of your body, almost your entire kit is to your right. You have two drums to your right, two in the middle, and then the bass drum. So three drums to your right. That doesn't make much sense. Yeah, you're right-handed, but most people play with both hands on almost every lick. So. Um, all your tom fills are going to be to the right. And if you're spending all night over here, then you start to twist because that's where you want to be. And that puts you in a bad spot again. In order to alleviate that, we got to come up with something creative, which is why I always, always, always mount my toms on a separate stand instead of on the bass drum. If you don't want to buy a tom rack and arms and, you know, some kind of a crazy mounting system, another thing you can do, mount the second tom on the bass drum, but in the first tom spot, and put the first drum in a snare drum stand. This isn't unheard of. Uh, you know, a lot of classic rock drummers didn't even use tom mounts. They just put their toms in snare baskets all the way around. Now you can do that, all of a sudden you can put that first tom wherever you want. So you can have your snare drum, tom tom, right in front of you, and then of course your floor tom is on the floor because that's where it goes. Now, if you had the option of having two floor toms and one rack tom, I would really recommend against that because 
the one floor tom can only get so close to the bass drum. So if your bass drum is here, where it should be, in front of your leg, the floor tom has to be to the right of it. If you put another floor tom in, where does it go? Way back here. Floor tom, floor tom. So you have a huge drum, but it's way over here. Look how much twisting I have to do to get into proper playing position for that. So we just talked about not twisting for this whole video. Why would I put that back there? Yeah, I know that John Bonham did it, and he was in Led Zeppelin, and that gives him a lot of credibility. Uh, I don't deny that at all, so we won't go there. But he may not have had the most sense when it came to setting up his drum set. Now, instead, if you have the two rack toms and one floor tom system, that tends to be more standard, that actually makes a lot more sense, because you can put them in front of you and only have the one floor tom, you spend less time twisting, and that's good for you. But it always personally irks me a little bit, and it doesn't make any sense. When you have things like china cymbals and gongs, and they're behind your head. I mean, with, you know, reasonable accuracy, I could hit anything pretty much in line with my shoulders, because I can see it, and it's not a big deal. But when you start getting behind that, to where you can't see it out of your peripheral vision, then for one, it's going to be difficult to hit. Two, you're going to have to twist again to get to it. Use your vertical space to somewhere you can reach rather than going around to somewhere that you can't because that just doesn't make any sense. Also, if you compare a double bass drum kit to a single bass, double bass, they pretty much always have two rack toms directly in front of the drummer, not mounted on one bass drum versus the other. And so all I'm proposing is that we're going to take the double bass kit layout, which is really comfortable and ergonomic, and just take one bass drum away if you don't happen to have that bass drum. It's a totally optional drum. Um, whether or not you play it, the rest of your kit actually should not change. Not at all. It should be the same. To review, we're going to sit facing our audience, and we're going to put our bass drum in front of our right foot where it goes, hi-hat or other bass drum, whatever you've got in front of your left foot, where it makes sense. Try to mount your rack toms in front of you, not to your right, because there's no reason to spend your whole day twisted to the right. And then, prefer, if possible, to get more rack toms and less floor toms, so you spend less time twisting your body to the right. Even if you're like, oh, well, twisting isn't that bad, it doesn't hurt. Okay, do you ever twist to the left? No, probably not. If you're a typical drummer, you never twist to the left. So if you spent your whole time going like this, okay, that just takes a little bit of core, no big deal. But because most drummers that are right-handed typically always twist right and never left, that puts you out of balance. Drum sets come out of the box from the factory, you set them up the way they are in the pictures, and that's not what I'm describing. And does that make them all wrong? I'm saying kind of, it does. But they're doing it for ease. They don't want to provide you with another stand, so they came up with a cost-effective way to mount two toms in an inconvenient place for you. And everyone lets them get away with it. So let's back up, put the toms and the bass drum where it makes sense, and try to play so that we aren't putting ourselves way out of balance. Most drummers, by the way, have an extra snare drum stand somewhere. Uh, then you can easily set up like this and not have any imbalances, it's ergonomically correct, and it makes sense.